Welcome back. Today on Dialed In DIY, we're making neon green slime. We're gonna make multiple versions, actually, one of which glows really bright. That's right, this one version glows so bright, it's actually brighter than the past glow sticks that I made. The links to those videos are in the description below, as well as additional information about the materials and how we made these different versions in this video. Each variation is just a slight alteration to the main process, but we're gonna end up with a thick glow blob, a medium ooze, runny slime, and even a really creamy looking slime. The key is this first step, which is making a catalyst. We're gonna use one tablespoon of borax and a cup of warm water, and this is gonna make enough borax solution that we can use this for each of the variations of slime that we're gonna make here. The key is stirring it up until it's all dissolved, and if you can't quite get it all to dissolve, at least let it settle out and separate the liquid from the remaining powder at the bottom. Now, on to batch one. We're gonna make our glowing blob. We're starting with five liquid ounces of clear Elmer's glue and putting that into a measuring cup. I'm then gonna measure out 10 ounces of warm water and add that to the glue and mix it up really well. Once you've got the glue and water mixed up, it's time to add the color that you want. In this case, we're using neon green food coloring that I got at the grocery store. I'm just adding about four or five drops to this particular batch. Then I'm getting out my handy dandy strontium illuminate. That's that super glow powder that I made the glow sticks with in past videos. I'm using one tablespoon of that and I'm gonna add it right into my glue and water mixture. I wanna make sure that I add this slowly while stirring quickly and constantly. I use this point to stop and check and see if I got enough glow out of the mixture that I have at this point, which I was very pleased with. My one recommendation though is if you're using strontium illuminate in this process, move straight from adding it to the glue mixture to mixing in the catalyst. That will keep it separated just a little bit better. I recommend adding the borax solution just a little bit at a time. I'm starting with one tablespoon here because this way you get a chance to find out exactly how thick it turns out so that you don't go too far. In this particular case, I wanted it to be really thick, so I kept adding and adding and adding. You'll notice though, as you stir this, it starts to stick to the spoon. So if you pull the spoon up and out, it's there stuck on the spoon like a clump or a blob. It's already looking like some pretty serious ooze. At this point, you'll notice you can actually go ahead and start touching it and it will peel away from the spoon. I'm pushing it back into the mixture because I want this entire batch to get thick to more of a solid blob-like consistency. In order to do that, I'm adding a second tablespoon of the borax solution. In the next batches, I'll explain how to keep it from getting this thick, but this is what I wanted this time. So I'm pulling it all out of the cup and going ahead and starting to knead it like a ball of dough. Look how it kind of flattens itself back out once you're done. Your slime will last longer if you keep it in an airtight container. Ziploc bags work great for this. The blob is just glowing from the ambient light it got while I was working on it, but I put the rest in a jar and charged it under blacklight for 10 seconds and it lit up my entire workbench. Another fun thing about this flubber-like blob I made is that if you pinch a piece off and roll it up into a ball, it bounces like a super ball. It's actually pretty cool. You add it back to the rest of the mix and it just melts right back in. Don't want your slime to be this thick? Not a problem. Let's move on to batch number two and make a medium thickness ooze. This time we're gonna combine five ounces of glue five ounces of water, and our food coloring. Then we're gonna go back and use our borax solution, but this time we're gonna use just a little bit less than a tablespoon of the catalyst. To make this version, I went with a bigger mixing bowl because it helps me to keep it stirring around quickly and break up the thicker areas. If you're really whipping it up, you're gonna get a little bit of a foamy-like reaction, but not to worry, that's gonna settle back out. Once you've got it stirred up, let it sit for a minute and the catalyst will finish its reaction. Then you can go back and scoop it out with your hands and finish the mixing process yourself. After this, I'll let it sit for a little bit more and then you're gonna find that it sticks to your fingers a lot less because it is completely ready for whatever fun you have in mind with it. So if this version's still too thick for what you're after, let's move on to batch three and make ourselves some runny slime. We're essentially gonna repeat the process we did in number two, but we're gonna go back to the first version ratio of water to glue. As you can see from the pictures, this particular ratio gives you exactly what you're after if you wanted that more runny, slimy-like reaction. Wanna make a creamier slime? Go back to the second or third option, but substitute Elmer's white glue for the clear glue. With this version, you can actually add a couple tablespoons of liquid glow paint to get back to your glowing slime. I took that first batch with the glow powder in it and stuck it in a clear container and then exposed it to a longer duration under a black light. And I ended up with something that was really quite amazing. 
I've got a huge glow stick that's brighter than any glow stick I made from scratch myself before. I also put the runny slime that was made with clear glue in a container as well so you can see how it compares to the glow slime. Thank you for watching. Please press like and then subscribe. There will be more dialed in DIY to come.